Hello everyone, AI always has something new, every week, and now even every day. Just at the beginning of this week we talked about SVI 2.0, image to video, long length video generation, where we take one image frame like this and animate it into say, 30 seconds or even a minute of video. It's kind of like storytelling AI video content that you can create from just a single image. And today, we've got something even cooler. Using one image and aligning it with motion control, specifically control net pose, to animate a character dancing, moving, or doing whatever actions you want, driven by that motion control. In this video, we're going to check out a model called One to All Animation. This is alignment free character animation and image pose transfer. Basically, it uses control net pose and one initial image of your character to drive video animation, using that pose as the motion guide to animate the character's movement. We've seen a lot of similar AI models work like this before, but here's what's different. You can use a reference image along with a motion driving video, even if the camera distance or angle is totally different. It can still align your reference character with the driving pose to animate the movement. For example, take these two reference images here. They're facing left with a close-up shot. Meanwhile, the pose input looks like this, using open pose or DW pose via control net and the output animation follows that control net pose, like this, and also this and other examples. Like in this one, the character was sitting down, but the driving video is a full body, standing shot, and then it starts dancing like this. It can even control facial expressions because there's a face pose model that enables that. So far, what I've seen is that when you have a medium or close-up shot, the character can mimic facial expressions pretty well at that distance. But if you have a far shot, like a full-body view, you barely see much facial expression at all. Another thing, you'll notice a comparison between this one-to-all animation model and WAN 2.2 Animate. This is a pretty typical pose comparison, but then, when using WAN Animate, I've seen something go wrong in their generation, like blurry hands or other defective areas. In my experience running WAN Animate, it doesn't usually happen like that. So let's check out how this model actually performs locally, so you can run it yourself and see how it really works, instead of just relying on the examples they show here. First, check out the one to all Animation GitHub page. It highlights that this is a fine-tuned version of WAN 2.1 including the 1.3b and 14b model checkpoints. So you've got the smaller 1.3 billion model to play around with, or the full 14 billion model if you want. The showcase there also compares what the 14b and 1.3b models look like when running the full model weights. And of course, for Comfy UI, we've got repackaged files from the When Videos Comfy UI Hugging Face repository with FP16 versions of both the 1.3b and 14b models. I'm going to use the FP1614B model in this video to run some examples. And if you're on a lower VRAM setup, you can try the FP8 model files from that Hugging Face repo. They're about 18 gigabytes in file size. So first, make sure you've updated your Comfy UI One Video Wrapper custom nodes from the GitHub repo. Once you do, you'll see that it now supports custom nodes capable of running the one to all animation framework. After you download or update the custom node and grab the Hugging Face AI model files, save them in your models folder, specifically in the Diffusion Models subfolder. I've created a WAN 2.1 subfolder to keep everything organized. I've downloaded both the FP16 and FP8 models, but today I'm going to test the FP16 version just to see how well it performs. Now, let's jump into Comfy UI. I've updated to the latest version of the WAN video wrapper, and you'll notice that when you type one to all, a new node appears. This node lets you extend video length. It's not just limited to five seconds anymore. I've tested it and was able to generate a full minute of video without deformations or AI rendering degradation. So it's working really well, and that's a standout feature of this model, creating long, stable animations. You'll also need the WAN Animate preprocessor for pose detection and for aligning your input image to the reference pose, whether it's DW pose or open pose. This preprocessor custom node is the same one we used before with WAN Animate for open pose detection of body and face. You can download it from the same GitHub repo. There are instructions to download YOLO files for body movement detection and place them in your model detection folder. 
That way, the YOLO model can detect the pose from your driving motion video. You'll also need the VIT pose ONNX files. They work together with the YOLO files. All right, let's jump into Comfy UI. After downloading all those files and following the instructions in the GitHub repo, which are pretty straightforward and easy, you'll be ready to go. Once everything's set up, you can try the demo workflow that's included in the Comfy UI One Video Wrapper custom nodes after the update. As you can see, I've got a driving video of character motion, typically used for dancing or single character movement, like this one I created. And here's another example that shows exactly what this AI model is designed for, mimicking single character motion. That's why we need both a reference video and a reference image. The reference image determines what your final generated video will look like. So this time, I'm going to use another AI generated character, something with a pretty close shot, similar to the driving video. That usually gives you better results. First, I'll disable the model group because I want to focus just on how the one to all animation framework handles alignment. This node is super important. It lets us align the reference image and the pose from the video first. Then it generates pose images, all the frames from your video, plus a reference pose image from this custom node, aligned to match the camera distance of your input video. Let's run it. It'll first load the video and process it through the ONNX detection model loader. Okay, so here's one setting option for alignment, align to reference image. Another option is align to pose, and the third is none, meaning no alignment at all. For better results, you'll usually pick either reference image or reference pose. If you choose reference image, this custom node will align everything based on your input image, matching the camera distance and adjusting the DW pose or open pose accordingly. For example, I've input this young lady in a black dress as my reference image. The output won't change the image distance. Instead, it'll adjust the pose alignment to match the video's reference pose. So in the first frame, you'll see the character at the same distance as in the reference image. That's one way the framework aligns your reference image with the video pose. Now, when the video plays, even though the movement matches the TikTok dance video I input, the camera distance stays aligned with my original image. That's a key concept in how the one to all animation framework works. If instead you choose align to pose, it changes your reference image's camera distance to match the reference video. Let's run it again so you can see the difference. This is the second alignment setting, align to pose. In this case, the DW pose doesn't change the distance. It stays the same as your input video where the dancer has a consistent camera distance. But now your input image, the AI generated character gets adjusted to match that distance. You'll notice a black border in the mask as the character is scaled and aligned to fit the pose from the driving video. This is really important to understand when using one to all animation. Sometimes align to reference image doesn't work well. If you see weird animations, you might need to switch to align to pose. There are two options and which one you pick depends on your scenario. For example, if your image is a close up, but your reference video is a medium or far shot, you'll probably want to switch settings to get a better result. Now let's enable the model loader. I'm loading the FP16 one to all animation model. On my setup, I don't need to enable torch compile or block swap, but if you have low VRAM, you should turn those on. Secondly, we're using the Light X2 V LoRa to reduce sampling steps and speed up video generation. Without it, you'd need to increase sampling steps back to 20 or 30. The VAE and text encoder settings are the same as the classic WAN 2.1 setup. This Wanto video text encode node uses a text prompt for the entire video generation through all these daisy chained custom nodes. All you need to do is describe what your character is doing, dancing, jumping, kicking, whatever action matches your reference image. So I'm updating the text prompt to match my reference image. Since the lower body isn't visible in my reference, I'll add a bit more detail, like wearing long black leather boots. So when the video shows the bottom half, it generates that style correctly. Okay, here's the generated video. Let's break it down. First, you need to define the number of frames for each sampler. In this demo workflow, num frames doesn't mean the total frames. It means 81 frames per sampler group. 
The default overlap is 5 frames, which is typically enough for this AI model. For comparison, older frameworks like WAN 2.1 or 2.2 VASE usually need more overlap. Width and height are set based on your output ratio, vertical or horizontal. CFG is kept at 1, which is standard when using the Light X2 V LoRa. Now we're using the WAN video scheduler to control all sampler settings. We're on Euler A sampler with 6 steps and a default shift value of 7. You can increase that a bit if you're going for faster motions, like dance moves or more complex actions. Leave the start and end steps at default, since we're running all sampling steps through one scheduler. That means the six steps here will apply to every one video sampler connected to this scheduler, which overrides the individual sampler node settings. So again, the one video sampler node has its own options, but they'll be overridden by this scheduler node once it's connected. That includes step count and shift values. For seeds, set the first sampler group to a fixed seed, standard practice. And here's the first batch of generated results. As you can see, for some fast motions, like when the hands move quickly, they start getting blurry. Even when I tried many other videos yesterday during testing, it happened with these AI models. We might need to use frame interpolation and upscalers to enhance hand movement when body parts or hands are moving really fast. But overall, the way the body follows motion is pretty nice. It tracks well from our reference video. So moving forward, this whole process just repeats every 81 frames. Now we don't count in seconds here, because at the core, AI models work in frames. In each sampler group after the first one, you get an image batch extend with overlap. Once you have this, you can use it to define your overlap frames too. Just plug it in here. The source image connects to the output. From here, we extend our first sampler's 81 frames, then continue with the next segment, another 81 frames, generated in this sampler, and connect it to the next node. The image batch extend node here takes both the source image and the newly extended frames, then trims off those five overlapping frames for stitching. It's basically a stitching custom node that feeds into the next part. As you can see, it's a very typical setup, just like with WAN video and code. Connect the image embed and text embed. But one thing you have to add here is the one to all extend embed and the one to all post embed. The post part handles the DW pose that was generated earlier in this workflow. Remember, we generated that DW pose skeleton, so we pass it into this node and we also pass all the pose images into the one to all extend embed. Doing it this way means you won't run into issues when extending your video length. And another great thing about this model, whether I use the FP16 or FP8 version, both can extend video length without the usual AI degradation, like color shifts or artifacts you often see in WAN 2.2 Animate or WAN 2.1 or 2.2 Vase. With those older models, once you hit the model limit, the output starts degrading, colors shift, details blur, or things just fall apart. But this model doesn't do that. Look at this full dance routine over 20 seconds, and it still maintains consistent colors and keeps the character looking. Of course, there's still some blurriness in the hair and hands during fast motion. To fix that, we'd want to sharpen those areas, maybe add a detail-enhancing LoRa. Since this is built on WAN 2.1, there are plenty of LoRas available that can help with that. So, I'm going to try another setup with different video examples and a different alignment method. And you'll see, if you pick the wrong alignment, it's obvious right away. The output goes way off track and doesn't match what you expected from the dance video. So remember, getting the image and pose alignment right at the start is super important. Okay, here's a bad example I set up on purpose. I just generated the first sampler group to show what happens when your pose detection and image alignment settings are off. Even though the image is on the right side at 480p resolution and the pose matches that resolution, if your video isn't in the same aspect ratio, you'll get weird DW pose skeletons like this with giant hands and super long arms. But the actual dance looks really beautiful like this. So instead, you end up creating a monster, big arms, stretched hands, that doesn't match what you're trying to animate at all. That's exactly why it's so important to test align to reference first. Or if your reference video has totally different dimensions, you might need to go with Aligned to pose. In this case, the video isn't standard 480p. It's a very tall portrait style motion clip, so if you try to squeeze that pose into a 480p square, 
it distorts everything. That's how you get those monster hands showing up in the output. Just be aware of that. And of course, if you know me, you know I'm never satisfied with the default demo workflows. So I like to make loops for these long length videos, and the one to all animate model is perfect for that because it doesn't introduce frame degradation, color shifts, or other artifacts over time. Look at this example. After generating a long video, the character and colors stay consistent all the way through. I didn't even need to add a color match node at the end of each segment, and looping it is way simpler. The node connections are clean, no spaghetti mess. It doesn't require a ton of extra setup. Now, remember that front part I mentioned earlier, using align to pose? That often creates more empty space, like an alpha area around your character in the reference image. So when you generate, you'll get more background in the output, which can lead to some fun surprises. Like in this example, you see decorations in the background. It even looks like a studio with an electronic puck on the wall. So that's another way to connect the one-to-all animation model with looping, just like other long videos I've done before. It's more systematic. You don't have to copy-paste samplers and chain them together like a meatball spaghetti mess, manually counting frames. Let the computer do what it's good at. It won't mess up the count. And it can just keep running, no matter how long your video is, as long as you've got enough memory and VRAM for the job. Here's another example. I'm using a different dance routine and a different character. This time, I aligned to the pose, but you could just as easily align to the image. Either way, it adjusts the camera distance for the animation. Once you get the output, you can upscale it or do whatever post-processing you want. And like in my last video, remember I talked about stylization? You can apply that after generation. You can even chain in style prompts at different points in the timeline. For example, use travel style prompts to shift the look over time, turn it into anime style, comic book style, or any other aesthetic you want at different durations. It's totally doable. Like one test I ran earlier. I started with a cheerleader, and after the first batch, I switched to an anime style, then kept changing styles again and again. That creates really cool, dynamic video effects using stylization prompts. And that's it for this video. So far, this looks pretty cool. What I really like is that it's much lighter and faster than WAN 2.2, and it fixes those annoying color shifts and AI degradations we used to get with other ControlNet animation models. As usual, I'll show some final examples at the end of this video, so you can see the kinds of effects we can achieve.